Hello Ratbags, it's Joe Plays Games back again with another ARK Survival Evolved news update video. ARK update patch 755 hit yesterday. And by now you should know that the PS4 update should be hitting Monday the 12th of June. So there are a bunch of brand new things. I've already shown you guys how to spawn in the ATV on the Xbox and that will work on the PlayStation as well. But there are some issues that I want to let you guys know about. Starting off with the host barrier, it's been something we've wanted for so long. If you didn't know, on PC you can adjust the actual length of the barrier. And this has been in the game quite a while, but it's very unstable. Even if you turn it up really high, people generally start noticing problems and issues. Because it's on PC and because they use the same menu screen, it's now available on console. So finally, you can, if you wanted to, take off the host barrier. But, as Jack, the community manager, says here, is he doesn't know if it should actually be on console. Hopefully it can stay. And he has just put that they have requested it for it to stay, but it is down to the engineering department to make that happen. So don't get too excited about the host barrier being there, guys. It still may be limited. So you can see here, this is the non-dedicated host tether distance. So basically the multiplayer bubble that stops you from running around the map when you're on a non-dedicated server. Now if you increase it all the way to the right, you should effectively increase the size of the bubble. So maybe do some experimentation, try and get 8 people on your server, and go mad and put like a thousand and see what effect it has. How far can you actually go? But I would suggest don't do it on your world you've been building on, do it on just a blank map if you've not tried one before. Or even a procedurally generated one. Just in case it causes any problems or it corrupts your data. Remember, this is still unstable, that's why they're concerned about leaving it on the console. Even on PC, there has been problems with people making the host barrier too big. ARC is extremely intensive on memory. Now, most PCs can go up and down and they can cope just about with certain aspects of it, depending on what the graphics card is and what processor you've got. Whereas Xbox and PS4 are capped, so there is a limit to how much they can really do. So when your computer or your console is trying to remember exactly where every player is on the map, exactly what they're doing and rendering in all the creatures and all the actual terrain, it can be really problematic. That's why they've not had it from the start. There are open world games out there that allow you to travel around the world with your friends. So it's not out the realms of possibility, but it certainly needs a lot more optimization. And so far as you know, Ark doesn't have the best optimization. So if you notice anything at all, maybe graphics aren't rendering properly or there's issues with dinosaurs, It'd be down to the fact that the option of extending the non-dedicated barrier is too big. On top of that, I know you guys have been excited and hyped about war paint. It is working on dinos currently, so you can actually paint your dinos, but there is a problem with painting actual players. Someone asked about the actual issue, and Jack says it's meant to be applied to your character portrait on the infantry hub. Looks like it didn't make it live. We'll see if we can hotfix. So don't worry, don't panic. You will be able to give your player some tattoos and war paint. It's just going to take maybe a few days longer until they get a hot fix for it. Probably next week at some point. Until then, have lots of fun painting your dinos. And the other one that you lot were complaining about the most was you think you could fix the home screen HUD size. It doesn't give me an option on Xbox One to change it anymore. So I actually replied to this one. It's actually in the graphics in the options menu. They've actually moved it. So if you're having any problems with the HUD size or the screen size, go into your graphics options and change it there. The menu systems have been revamped, but they are still much the same. They've just moved some things around and added a few new bits and bobs. I will be doing my fourth tutorial on server settings in the next couple days. So hold tight, I'm going to give you the final complete lowdown. And any that I got wrong slightly in the past, I'm going to absolutely make sure we've got it down. We're going to test them all. And if you don't know about this one guys, there's been a long standing issue with baby imprinting. I have been trying to do a new tutorial on it. Now what I actually made was a cheat to actually get around it if you're on single player or non-dedicated player using a command. At the moment it's a problem with baby cuddle. If your baby needs a cuddle in 3 hours, there's no way to reduce that time unless you use a command. It's been not working for a good few months now. So hopefully it will be fixed in the next little while. Until then, stay tuned in the next couple of days when I actually show you guys how to actually get around it if you are on single player or non-dedicated player. And finally guys, I told you a few days ago that they're actually not planning on any sort of real TLC update in terms of adding new abilities for the dinosaurs. Well, Jat has gone on to explain on Reddit that they are planning a TLC update, but, but not to the extent that we were expecting. 
So they won't be changing actually how the creatures maybe look or how they actually move in terms of their skeletal bodies. They are looking at it, but they want to analyze it and do more with it. And you can see here that one, once the game actually fully launches, because remember it's still in beta, that's when they probably will take another further look at lots of these creatures. And to be honest, that's not the end of the world. Every game you can think of in terms of a multiplayer game or an open world game does go back and looks at things like this. They nerf and they buff, they debuff, whether it's weapons, whether it's creatures. And many, many times other games have shown improvements in the AI of people and creatures. So hopefully they'll all be taken into account when they actually revamp it. So, what not to expect, you won't see any of this until post actual full launch. Per pixel collision for dinos. Now as far as I know, that is reference to the hitboxes of the creatures, as well as where you actually hit the creature on the actual damage point of its body. So if you fire an arrow into a T-Rex's leg, it will actually show as damage on its leg rather than anywhere else. But in a lot more detail, new skeletal meshes, they're not going to change the actual physical shape of the creatures. They're also probably not going to be doing any large new animation sets. New special attacks for all dinos, some will probably get them. So I think that's in reference to the fact that some of the creatures like the Kentrosaurus can actually impale creatures. So maybe some of the other creatures will have some decent animation or they'll have a decent attack that actually shows something new and unique rather than just some generic hitbox. There's going to be no complicated new mechanics for dinos, but they are open to adding mechanics functionality to the older creatures to put them more in line with the recent releases. Now this is what I was really talking about when I done my video the other day. When you compare the old dinosaurs to the new dinosaurs, lots of new dinosaurs have special abilities or unique features. But apart from the fact that they may be buffed the gathering rate on certain creatures and what they can gather, there is no real sort of uniqueness to some of the old dinosaurs. You can still see here, though, it says we're still collecting feedback and reading suggestions on how we can improve dinos. And this is a good one of which example we had a lot of good ideas. And this is exactly the same one that I showed you guys the other day, done by Julian H101. He gave a big, massive load of actual improvements that he think are pretty good. So if you've got any ideas, you've got any improvements, absolutely get on Reddit and maybe post it at the bottom of this. Or go onto the forums and create a new forum. Maybe everyone can actually post it on there. So some of this stuff may come at launch, but you'd never know. So it looks like they may try and do some of these things by the actual full launch of the game, but it looks like it's definitely going to be something they'll be planning updates in the future. So there you go, guys. Just a quick one today. I've still got loads of content I'm trying to get done this weekend. Like I said, I'm going to be showing you the actual brand new settings menu. Every slider explained. I've also still got my tame videos to do on the brand new creatures. And once the actual hotfix comes in for painting your character, I'm going to show you guys how to create some tattoos and facial war paint. And just a big thank you guys. Since I've done my 25,000 subscribers video the other day um, and a few posts, it has just gone turbo the last few days. You guys have gone mad for the information about the new total conversion mod and the fact that we could possibly have DLC. The announcement for the DLC, hopefully, and any other plans they've got is coming tonight at 6 p.m. Pacific time and 8 p.m. Eastern time. I will actually be doing a shoutcast, so we'll be building up towards the actual announcement on Ark Survival Evolved in terms of what they're going to be releasing or doing. And I'll obviously show you the actual live stream as they're speaking and we can all talk about it and put it in the comments section at the same time. So it's going to be a late one for the UK. It's going to be on at 2 a.m. in the morning. So I'm pretty much going to stay up all night. So come and join me, guys. What would you like me to live stream a couple of hours beforehand? Some arc, some culling. You let me know in the comments section what you'd like to see. Like I said, during the event, I'm going to set it up so that we can all talk about it in the comments section on my YouTube channel. Specifically, if you don't like using Twitch. And to be honest, my Twitch account is pretty rubbish. I don't have that many followers. So if you've not followed my Twitch account, go ahead and follow it. Because I am going to start live streaming a lot more. In fact, over the next week, you're going to see loads and loads of stuff come from me. Starting off this week, I've got my Primitive Plus Let's Play starting as soon as the PS4 is updated. I'm going to be doing it on the PS4 with some of my patrons and friends. As well as that, I'm also starting my PC server Let's Play. I'm finalising the last few mods to be added tonight and we're going to get that going. And I've done a fantastic collaboration with Rocky X Gaming last night. So expect that on Monday. So loads of good stuff coming to my channel. Make sure you've got notifications turned on 
and let me know if you're going to be able to watch with me tonight. Maybe you can do some challenges, maybe do some fun games as well. Let me know in the comment section what ideas you've got, and maybe we can make it something really exciting. I am Jay Plays Games. I'm hyped for the E3 announcement. Hope you are too, and I'll see you rat bags later.